Mm-hmm. Why didn't anyone jump in and try to stop this? I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a, it, it's hard to explain that. I mean, you, on the one hand, I think you've got a bit of that phenomena where you know you got the the famous case of the woman in Brooklyn who got stabbed in front of 38 witnesses and none of them called the cops. There's a famous 1964 case that people always talk about, about how people are basically irresponsible or whatever you want to call it. A a recent book came out called uh, um, Tipping Point, which studied that whole thing. They went out and interviewed every one of those 38 people and found out it wasn't that uh, nobody called despite 38 people seeing it. It was precisely because 38 people saw it that nobody called. Because everybody else thought if it's happening in broad daylight in front of 38 people, there must be some reason for it or they thought somebody else is going to do something about it. Okay, there's that part of it. The other part of it is a combination where you have such a level of control put in with this guy and fear and where nobody can defy him. Because if they do, they're, you know, he's so vengeful, you could be persona non grata for the next 12 years if you ever do anything that, that indicates that you have an intention that even slightly is in disagreement with any of his intentions. I don't know how to explain it to you. It's the way it's operated. And, you know, working in that area for so many years, you, you, you realize that, you know, you could be, you know, the head of the International Watchdog Committee one day, and if you so much as sneezed wrong, he'd have you busting rocks for the next 12 years. And so there was that fear factor. Interestingly, you say, how could somebody hold, you know, hold people in, in, a, in a spell like that? One of the ways he's done it is to identify, identify himself successfully, at least internally, and I think with the public of Scientology, that he is somehow the anointed one, appointed by L. Ron Hubbard to carry forward the legacy. It's a complete and utter 100% bald-faced lie. But he successfully orchestrated it, and they believe it. And when they believe that, they're willing to do almost anything. Okay. Um, so people, because people don't fight back, they just sit there and take it? They, they just cower and, and just accept the attacks? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's not the way I dealt with it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I, I defended myself. And of course, when I defended myself, he only, only laid gloves on me twice. Tell Both times... That. He hit me in the midsection, and I flexed my abs, and he ended up hurting his hand and screaming at the top of his lungs to his wife, do you see that, Shelly? He's trying to kill me. Look at him. He's clenched. He wants to kill me. He's evil. Do you see? And he's on and on and on and on, and then he blows out of the room. But he would always do that in private with me. He never did that in front of other people. What would... Uh... But, but you, to answer your question, mm-hmm. yes, they take it. They take it? They, they take it. They just cower on the floor? Just, just they get in the fetal position. Mark Yeager, I've seen him in the fetal position numerous times, you know, just covering up to cover his vital parts because the guy will start kicking on him, throwing big volumes at him. You know, Looks? Like, yeah, uh, the big green volumes mm-hmm. or the red volumes. Boom! Throwing water bottles, you know, 16-ounce water bottles. He throws water bottles at women. Now, I've never seen him go out, literally strike with his hand a woman, but I've seen him throw water bottles at women. Filled with water? Filled with water. Mm-hmm. And the volumes you were talking about, the size of what, like an encyclopedia or a Like an Bible encyclopedia or? Britannica, like that thick, mm-hmm. you know, that big. Mm-hmm. Did anyone have to, ever have to be treated medically for this? For these mm-hmm. speedings? I don't know. <laughs> I bet your render had to go to a chiropractor. I mean, he messed his neck mm-hmm. up pretty good. Would uh, would anyone have occasion to report this to the authorities? Would why did that ever happen? Well, that's that's that's, that's kind of requires a longer answer, I guess. It's sort of that whole thing of your, you know, you you program into this existence and this mindset, you know, and um, when you leave it, it takes a while to decompress, you know, and get your bearings straight. Like, it took me like four years, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's probably a short runway for a guy who's been in for 27 years. You, you understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm, I've talked to people now that I've been out on the internet. I mean, I've got people coming out of the woodwork contacting me who I don't even remember. I mean, they were they were tight 20 years ago, and now they're talking for the first time. You know, so you kind of you kind of learn to to pent it up 
within you. So the funny thing is, I don't think that by the time anybody kind of decompresses, goes through the decompression cycle and gets their life back together, I think the statute of limitations are shot, quite frankly. I think that's why this guy uh, hasn't been serving time for A and B, you know, assault and battery. Do every everyday Scientologists practicing around the world know about this? Oh, absolutely not. They have no clue. What would they think, do you think, if they knew about this? I don't know. We'll see what they think. They're about to find out about it. We'll see what they think. Mm-hmm. I mean, he really stage manages his uh, public relations with these, with these people. Tom, he goes this far. In Clearwater, in his special apartment, he's got a, a tanning table. So the day before the event, you know, he, he looks nice, healthy, clean. He's got the, a biographer for L. Ron Hubbard, who's supposed to be doing the L. Ron Hubbard biography. He's been on the, on the payroll for 15 years to get the biography done. He'll never get it done because he's writing Dave's speeches for the five, six events a year that he does. The whole world's about this stage-managed public persona image that he puts out to the public Scientologists. But while he's doing the salon table, he's got Rinder and Jaeger and Guillaume and these people who are going to be co-speakers with him staying up night after night after night before the events, constantly changing their speeches so they're, they're going to fumble when they get to him, so that when he gets out there, he looks like a movie star compared to these guys that are up there with him. You get, you get, it's, it's pretty twisted. 